the horizon always appears perfectly flat 360 degrees around the observer regardless of altitude. All amateur balloon, rocket, plane, and drone footage show a completely flat horizon over 20 plus miles high. Only NASA and other government space agencies show curvature in their fake CGI photos and videos. The horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer as altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. If Earth were in fact a globe, no matter how large, as you ascended, the horizon would stay fixed and the observer would have to tilt looking down further and further to see it. Amateur balloon footage taken above the clouds has provided stunning visual proof that the sun cannot be millions of miles away. In several shots, you can see a clear hot spot reflecting on the clouds directly below the sun's spotlight-like influence. If the sun were actually millions of miles away, such a small localized hot spot could not occur. You said he had some consultations about that war, but that war was launched under a false pretext Point. to actually First deliver all, the that judgment. The very fact that you can actually say these things is a testament to the fact that the world has come a long ways from the days of the czars and the kings and the queens. I'm the king, off with your head. You'd be put in prison for saying a fraction of the things that you just said. But I wonder why, why is it that freedom of speech is considered to be the domain of a Western democracies? Freedom of, of speech, freedom of science, freedom of exploration existed in a non-democratic world not as well. Existing. I'm the king, off with your head. Well, come out! But Bill, isn't it a problem when science guys attempt to bully other people? I mean, Nick here had to say, me. I'm not a denier. He had to get it up. I'm not a denier because really, the, the science group has tried to shame anyone who dares question this. And the point I'm why trying that, to make is, is however, the scare tactics have not worked. It's not working with the public. Well, I'm going to be uh, silent. Uh, um, no, you're not. Hold on. No, that's, that's not true. See, you said you wouldn't talk. But, I did say. Okay. I'm the king off with your head. And uh, if I don't apply enough force, then it'll stay like some sort of misstate, you know, potato shape. So that's what gravity is doing, really. It's acting as a, as a force that's squashing it down. And, and, and it'll turn it into a sphere because it acts the same in every direction. And, and, and it'll turn it into a sphere because it acts the same in every direction. And that means that if it is proved that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out, and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. So, um, so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Yeah. It gets wider in the middle. and So, Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere, it's an it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid, that's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good way, it's like pear-shaped. Pear-shaped, pear-shaped, pear-shaped.
curiosity as to where we are, what we are, is very much more exciting to discover we're on a ball, half of it sticking upside down. It's spinning around in space. It's a mysterious force which holds us on. It's going around a great big glob of gas that's burning by a fuel, by a fire that's completely different than the fire, any fire we can make. Well, now we can make that fire, nuclear fire. No. But uh, that's a much more exciting story to many people than the tales which other people used to make up who worried about the universe, that we were living on the back of a turtle or something like that. They were wonderful stories, but the truth is so much more remarkable. And so what's the pleasure in physics is that, to me, is that as it's revealed, the truth is so remarkable, so amazing. And I can't, I have this disease, and many other people who have studied far enough to begin to understand a little of how things work are fascinated by it, and this fascination drives them on to such an extent that they've been able to convince governments and so on to keep supporting them in this investigation that the race is making into its own environment. The reading caboose has arrived. I'm Conductor Clark. And I'm Ms. Janice. Hey, who wants to learn about the letter H? I do, I do! Hmm, now what can we do with the letter H? We can hula hoop. Or? Create a massive global hoax. <laughs> what Ernie's referring to is the Apollo 11 moon landing that supposedly, supposedly. took place on July 20th, 1969. To quote Neil Armstrong, this is one small step for man... And one giant lie to mankind. Ticket Taker Sam! Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, Ticket Taker Sam. <laughs> Sam's been riding the rails ever since mean old Microsoft stole his formula for Windows 95. <laughs> hey, Sam, I hear you've got a story for the kids. I sure do, Miss Janice, and it's a real whiz banger. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a president named Kennedy. Boo! Well, I promised to put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Mr. President, didn't you also promise civil rights? That's another story, Trevor. Now excuse me while I go sleep with Judith Exner. Meanwhile, poor inept NASA couldn't get a rocket into space. Pew! So, they turned to Plan B. I'm LBJ. Boo! The end of the decade is here, and there's still no Americans on the moon. Those Ruskies are gonna beat us to it. I'll help you, Mr. President. Who the hell are you? I'm Stanley Kubrick, and I'll use the tricks I learned while filming the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, to fake a moon landing. And we're the Mafia, and we'll fund your scam to build a secret soundstage in Las Vegas. Good. While people think they're in space, we'll keep the astronauts busy with whores and gambling. Then we'll pay them off, or brainwash them, or kill them. The end. Yay! Squawk? But is there any real proof it was a hoax? Squawk? Is this proof enough, Gully Bird? Wow! I used to fly to the moon all the time. Hobo Dan! Hey, Hobo Dan. How did you fly to the moon? With the only real astronaut, Dr. Timothy Leary. <laughs> oh, Hobo Dan. Hey, that reminds me of a song. This old moon rocket ain't what it appears to be. Ain't what it appears to be. Ain't what it appears to be. This old moon rocket ain't what it appears to be because it was baked in a kiln in Japan. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, Hobo Dan. That was fun, credible, and the truth. <laughs> oh, oh, someone's ringing the doorbell. To the safe room, kids. To the safe room. Well, that's all the time that we have for now. We'll be back with more reading later. Until then, the most important part of reading is reading, reading between, between the, the lines. lines. Sayonara, pigs. You have a theory about the moon, and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. 
Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma, a plasma phenomenon, a cosmic plasma, and that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theory? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because it will give proof that a complete re reinvestigation of the laws of nature is necessary. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it, the soft landing attempts will all fail. That means that the mass of the moon is less, far less, than is currently assumed. It's in a different state of energy and it has far less mass. That means there is no more explanation for the tides. If the moon, for example, had only a thousandth part of its current mass, then the tides would only be two inches high and the conventional theories instead of sometimes 14 feet. And that means that if it is proof that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. Aren't you being a bit adventurous though, because uh, you know that we're going to be able to test out your theories on the moon fairly soon. Well, not anymore. Eleven years ago, uh, of course, uh, it was rather taking a risk. I was considered a lunatic, of course. But by now, the evidence, accumulated evidence, is already so much in my favor that I'm not taking any risks anymore. On the contrary, uh, there is scientific views expressed all over the world now that uh, the moon uh, seems to be of a quite different nature of what was assumed. But and the, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Uh, well, that will never happen. Not on the moon. On Mars, on Venus, on other planets, yes. But the moon is definitely, as I assert, a plasma. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. Uh, money. It's a good thing. If you want to buy new things, new rockets, instead of keep doing the same thing over, well, then it's going to cost more money. And other things need more money too. So having achieved what the president wanted us to do, and then what thousands, millions of people in America, and millions of people around the world. You know, when we toured around the world after we came back, the most fascinating observation as we, was signs that said, we did it. Not just us, not just America, but we, the world, different country, they felt. They were part of what we were able to do, and that made us feel very good. Mm. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. Money. I'm going to just show you something. This is the moon in the middle of the day. The shadow is below and the light is upwards and away from the earth. The shadow separator line is not curved, it's straight. We are being told that the shadow on the moon sometimes is from the earth, but usually because of the angle at which the sun shines on it. However, the sun is over there and should illuminate the whole moon making it a full moon. But the lit part of the moon requires the sun to be way over there above the moon. We're being told that the light from the moon is a reflection from the sun. 
as the sun moves across the sky, the moon's phases does not change and are not dependent on the position of the sun, so this cannot be correct. The moon's phases are independent of the sun. Unless the moon is made of a reflective surface, it cannot reflect light. It seems to create its own light. Objects in moonlight cast shadows in the night, and the light is colder than sunlight. But if it creates its own light, why isn't it fully illuminated all the time? Has it got an internal light that only illuminates half of the moon and goes around like a lighthouse? The moon should be in complete shadow and not be visible in the daytime, because 12 noon I'm facing the sun directly, which means the moon is between us. So the sunlight can only illuminate the other side of the moon, the side that faces the sun. This is not what I'm experiencing. The part of the moon that is in shadow also seems transparent because it inherits the color of the sky. Its shadow side and the craters on the illuminated side are blue in the day and black in the night. Are rocks transparent? If we examine the border region between the light and dark, we see an uneven line indicating structure and an external light source. It's not self-illuminating. But the light source is not the sun. Is it just an animation? Does it even have mass? What's going on? What is the moon?
Party seeks power for its own sake, not as a means but an end. Power over the human mind, and because we control the mind. Reality is inside the skull, Winston. 
We control the laws of nature. The stars are not light years, but a few kilometers away. We have the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard. But we have the Air Force. Now we're going to have the Space Force because it's a whole... Because it's a whole... Because it's a whole... Flying so high, we're cracking the sky. Gonna fly out of this door, my girlfriend and I. I know we have still not shattered that highest and hardest glass ceiling, but someday someone will, and hopefully sooner than we might think. continued its advance into space by conducting five high-altitude tests above Johnston Island. Most of these bombs were carried aloft by the Air Force's Thor missile to continue the research of neutralizing incoming enemy warheads. Johnston Island was the center of launch and experimental activity for the 1962 high-altitude weapon effects testing termed Operation Fishbowl, geared to collect effects data from nuclear bursts at high altitudes. Standing offshore were nine instrumented test ships, vital links in the fishbowl effort. On islands south of the equator, in Johnston's southern magnetic conjugate area, a variety of instrumentation to collect effects data was set up for fishbowl. All in all, of the 266 fishbowl instrument stations, 156 were on land, while...
From the earliest known depictions of the Earth, it's always been flat and enclosed by a dome. The Egyptians, Norse, Hindus, Mayans, Incas, Navajos, Hebrews, etc. all knew that the Earth is flat and covered by the firmament, which is basically an impenetrable barrier encapsulating the flat plain. The flat Earth model dominated for thousands of years. It wasn't until 1543 that Nicholas Copernicus proposed the heliocentric model of the universe. But even with that, flat earthers and the flat earth model still went strong all the way up into the 1900s. We see proof of that with books like Zetetic Cosmogony by Thomas Winship, published in 1899. Terra Firma, The Earth Not a Planet, Proved from Scripture, Reason, and Fact by David Wardlaw Scott, published in 1901, or even Kings Dethroned by Gerard Hickson, published in 1922, where the author details all of the problems with heliocentrism and the mistakes made by people like Copernicus, Einstein, Newton, Kepler, etc. So we see from the beginning of time all the way until the 1900s, the flattened stationary Earth was going strong. In all honesty, flat Earth has never died. But for the sake of this video, we'll say up into the early and mid-1900s. In a magazine from August 1931 called Popular Science, explorer August Picard went on record stating, It seemed a flat disk with an upturned edge after ascending 10 miles high on a balloon. 10 miles is only a little over 50,000 feet. Today, we have balloons going up to 121,000 plus feet, which is almost 23 miles, and the Earth still shows nothing but flatness. Not to mention, the horizon remains at eye level at that height, something that would not be possible if the Earth was a sphere. Mainstream science says that curvature becomes visible at 35,000 feet. It simply is not so. Now let's run through another timeline, the timeline of trying to hide the flat Earth. Now we're going to exclude Copernicus here. We know that heliocentrism, spinning ball Earth, has been pushed since the 1500s, but it wasn't until the 1900s that moves were made to hide the true shape and nature of the Earth. In fact, they started programming us in 1912, before Earth's shape was even proven, supposedly. With the founding of Universal Pictures, we have been shown a spinning globe before every movie by that company for over a hundred years. But anyway, that started in 1912, and we kept cruising, and kept cruising, and in 1946, we have Operation High Jump, where an expedition to Antarctica was led by Admiral Richard E. Byrd. They say they went to Antarctica to train, test equipment, and test the possibilities of establishing and maintaining military research bases. They claim to have charted the Antarctic coastline during this time. Who knows what else they found? Fast forward a little bit. 1955, Operation Deep Freeze. This is just an expansion of high jump where more research bases are added to Antarctica. Fast forward a little more, 1958. NASA is established, followed by the proposal of the Antarctic Treaty in 1959 and the implementation of it in 1961. The treaty basically puts Antarctica off limits to civilians with the exception of guided tours that are carefully supervised. In 1962, Operation Fishbowl takes place. Now this is where people start thinking that they found the firmament or dome during Operation High Jump or Operation Deep Freeze because for some reason, they started firing nuclear missiles straight up as if trying to mess with the firmament somehow. And not to mention the name of the project, Fishbowl, easily symbolic for the enclosed nature of our world. A lot of people don't believe in nukes, nuclear weapons, but I obviously can't confirm one way or the other. Just do your own research. Okay, so the same year, 1962, JFK gives his famous We choose to go to the moon speech. Now I think all of these events tie into these guys finding out about the true disposition of Earth, including the crystalline canopy that we can't get past. Keep that in mind. 
They know we are trapped in and we can't leave. And they choose to pretend like we can leave, which comes back and bites them in the ass later. We'll get there, but let's continue. Four years later, 1966, Lunar Orbiter 1 captures the supposed first ever picture of Earth from deep space. Two years after that, in 1968, Apollo 8 captures this. In 1969, they capture this after Apollo 11 lands man on the moon for the very first time. And in 1972, on their sixth and final trip to the moon, we get one of the most famous pictures of all time, the blue marble. These alleged pictures of Earth, especially 1972's blue marble, are the entire reason behind pretending to go to the moon in the first place. The spherical Earth, flat Earth debate is over. All the ancient cultures of the world and all of the authors writing flat Earth books well into the 1900s are incorrect. The Earth is not flat. NASA has proved it. It's over. You live on a spinning ball, just like Universal Pictures predicted. Only one problem with that. It's now 2017. Curvature cannot be detected by anyone on Earth. Motion can't be detected, nor has it ever been proven, and now all of the sudden we can't figure out how to get past low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. NASA's next spacecraft, already being built and tested across America, will do those things and more. This is the spacecraft that's going to take humans to explore uh, the solar system. It's the next big step for NASA in exploration. Called the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV, this next generation spacecraft will enable America to explore beyond low Earth orbit. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. I think in, in many would consider it maybe even science fiction. The plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go, and this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. Low Earth orbit is between 99 miles and 1200 miles away. So we'll say that we can't get past 1200 miles and that's a big problem because the moon, according to the heliocentric model, is about 237,000 miles away. Now that's a big difference. Why was it so easy to go to the moon six times between 1969 and 1972, but we can't go even 1% of that distance now in 2017? Yeah, 1%. We can't even go 1% of that distance. Of course, they blame it on the idea of a radiation belt, but the truth is that the Van Allen belt is a cover story for the firmament. We live on a flat plane inside of an enclosed structure. It has always been this way, and it will always be this way. The ridiculous notion of us living on a spinning ball darting through infinite space is very new on the complete timeline of mankind. And at the rate things are going, it won't be around much longer. The deception of heliocentrism will have been a very short-lived attempt at removing man from his and her divine nature.
So what is significant about this video is number one, it was live to school children. Number two, we have this stuffed animal that is transitioning in on another video channel. And the actor is able to reach up and grab this doll in real 3D space and manipulate this doll with their hands. And so the only way you're gonna pull that off is with one technology. And that technology is virtual reality. Next segment, I'm gonna show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space, rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. So in this clip, they're talking live feed. And what you know, we have a astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic spacey station busy effect the only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out or the uh, video feed is not working and so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires pretty amazing but that's not all that goes wrong here Okay, so you see to the right, this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's, they're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now, in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him, but the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see, and so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day for NASA doing live feeds. space or maybe meeting other beings from another place have you ever wondered what it's like on other planets then you watch a science show and come to believe you understand it you feel empowered by the knowledge and you feel enlightened listening to bill nye and neil degrasse tyson but then you wake up and you start to see the obvious life is just a lie and this whole world ain't what we thought it was nasa's missions to the moon were never completed they just filmed them in a room and people believe it i used to wonder what it's like to be an astronaut now when i see them acting i can't help but to laugh a lot they give us cartoons and they claim that we live on a ball but it's flat and it's not moving or spinning at all why you lying to us man that's something that we want to know after that you're gonna have to pack up all your stuff and go has been rewritten by winners of wars the jesuit order kazars freemasons and more they pulled the veil over our eyes and it's time to awaken through organized indoctrination our minds have been taken it's time we take our power back and we rescue our people the vatican and the bankers are like resident evil they may have had the greatest plan that was ever concocted but illuminati never thought that they'd ever be spotted they're manufacturing reality all in our heads they tell us if the earth is flat then we'll fall off the edge but if it is a spinning ball we won't fall off it then and gravity is our imaginary magic friend why is water always flat when unmanipulated? Why are pictures of the earth computer generated? Why you lying to us, man? That's something that we want to know. After that, you're going to have to pack up all your stuff and go. Hello, my name is Bailey. Uh, this question is for Chris. What was high school like for you?
Well, it was the uh, 1980s, so the music was different, the hairstyle was different, the clothes we wore were different uh, than today, but probably in five or ten years it'll be the same. And uh, in, in school, I was just like you, probably all of you there. I, I tried my best. I didn't always succeed, didn't always do well, but I, I, I put my best effort into school. Math and science were kind of my favorite subject. I didn't really like uh, English and, and reading too much, but I've since grown out of that and I enjoy reading now. And I played a lot of sports. And all of that happened in a little town called York, Maine, across the United States from where we're talking to you right now.
Joe Rogan, me and him were having a flat earth discussion. I said, let's just handle it once and for all. Why don't we get Eric Dubé versus Neil deGrasse Tyson on JRE? That would destroy the internet. And Joe was all for it. Joe said, we can fucking make that happen. He contacts Neil deGrasse Tyson. He goes, dude, I contacted Neil. We're going to do it. I contact Eric Dubé. I go, it's fucking happening. Joe Rogan even put it on his schedule. He's talked about it on his podcast. Right when it was announced, Eric Dubé's YouTube channel gets deleted. If you go to his YouTube channel, he's made a video going, Joe, uh, when's this going to happen? Look, you put it on your schedule. You talked about it on your podcast. When's it going to happen? Joe wants to make it happen. The problem is Neil deGrasse Tyson. He don't want none of Eric Dubé.